We are back on this night of open line with John Navin of John Navin and Associates. Thank you for being here once My again. Pleasure. Hey, we still have time to take your call. If you have a question about retirement, retirement planning, you don't know what to do, you don't know where to go, tonight's your night to get some free advice. 737 plus is the number that is 7587. Already answered two calls, great questions. But let's talk about that fifth mistake that some yes. people make. Okay. And that's not diversifying or not knowing your options when it comes yes. to your investments. Yeah. And that can be scary because listen, this is not my job to no. know about the stock market and to know all these terms. And sometimes when you go into a planner, this is at least my experience, they start talking and these words keep flying over my head. And, and I don't know if, they, if they're doing it because it's just their lingo or they're doing it to, to convince you how smart they are. And then you go, okay, well, here's, here's my money. Mm -hmm. I don't understand what you're doing with it, but here you go. It's, it's, and it's a little bit of both. Okay. And, and I hate to see it um, because it's extremely frustrating. Yeah. So you have to be able to, uh, for example, like what I'll tell people is you got to be able to take what the experts talk about mm -hmm. and filter it out and decipher it and then explain it to people who don't talk about it every day. Right. Um, because I don't like getting talked over my head. No. And it, yeah, and, and this isn't my job. I no. don't, I, I'm not supposed to know this stuff, so no. don't make me feel like a dummy no. for not knowing it. When the electrician comes in, don't tell me yeah. about all the stuff that connects to the power box. and Just make sure my light works. Right. So I want to understand. Um, <laughs> exactly. You have to know enough about the investment choices to make an educated decision. So here's what's a little bit different. Because um, I'll often say with people is you, you have to know enough. You're not gonna know, you're not gonna know it all, but we have to fully understand what it is that you uh, like or understand or want to do with mm -hmm. your money. So a lot said there. Typically one person, if they're married, uh, handles more of the money, sure. but I will guarantee you the other person has an opinion about money. Mm -hmm. So you, yeah. have to, <laughs> you have to understand both of them uh, in this process. But then again, you have to understand enough just to, um, to know what the pros and cons are. One of the mistakes that I see people make is not understanding what their investment choices are. Uh, and or going, yes, just handle my stuff and mm -hmm. let me know when it works. Well, no, you need some ownership in it. You know, it's your plan. We'll, we'll create this plan together, but you need to own it. Um, in, in, in regards to what you're saying about people talking over your head, I like to use something called buckets just because it's easy. People mm -hmm. get buckets. If I'm going to put money in these different buckets, what does it look like? So we need a cash bucket. We need an income bucket. We need a short-term growth bucket and a long-term growth bucket. All the money is not placed in the same vehicles. Totally different strategies, totally different ideas, totally different concepts for each bucket. So, but we want to make sure that the cash bucket's doing better than most cash options available, but we have enough money cash and liquid. Our income bucket, we want to pull enough money off the portfolio to guarantee our income. Mm -hmm. So, some people use dividend paying stocks. Some people use bonds. Um, you know, 25 years ago, your parents put the money in a CD because they could get 6%, right. and it paid them, and they were fine. Yeah, um, not happening today. No, no. And 25 years ago, it was the retirement income planning wasn't even around because 25 years ago, you had a pension. No. And the, the company yeah. said, here's your pension, here's your 6% CD. Life was simple. Yeah. But now you have to create different strategies and different options, and it gets much more complicated. Um, so the, the second bucket is we want to carve enough money off the portfolio to guarantee this income stream for the rest of your life. Third bucket we use is called short-term money. So money that may be zero to three years, four years, and there's different strategies, money managers. And then the fifth bucket is a long-term bucket. So now we can start looking at more predominantly stocks, um, mm -hmm. ETFs, money managers, just a little bit of stuff that's a bit more aggressive. But you want to diversify. So are you talking... 20% each, or does it does it ebb and flow? It will ebb and flow. A simple yeah. rule of thumb is if you take 100 minus your age, so 100 minus 29, 29, <laughs> I love you, John. 29% of our money should be in fixed investments, 71% mm -hmm. of it should be in growth. As you get older, this is your ebb and flow part. Right. As you get older, that's gonna change. it's yeah. going to change. The other thing that's going to happen is as you get older, um, you also have to remember that even when you're 90, still 10% of your money should be in a growth bucket. Mm. So, and that can always change too, depending upon if somebody has a pension plan that guarantees their income, well then we could put more money in the growth bucket. We don't have to have this or this long-term bucket. We don't have to worry about income because the income's guaranteed. Um, if somebody has a small amount of money, then we may have to look more at keeping more of it safe. So mm -hmm. that's just a, a cool, a, a few simple rules of thumb that someone can look at. Now, even in 2008, 
I'm still a long way from away from retirement. Mm -hmm. Still am. But it scares me, even as a young investor back then, it scares me now that we're going to see that again. And yeah. I know it really scares people who are much closer to retirement. Right. How do you protect yourself? That's where, uh, again, I think our, uh, I won't say it's proprietary, but mm -hmm. <laughs> our sophisticated use of buckets, which is really much more sophisticated <laughs> than it sounds. Um, it really is quite sophisticated, but that's taking this and bringing it down yeah. to here. Um, you can't keep all your eggs in the same basket. Mm -hmm. They have to be spread out and diversified in different baskets. Um, another mistake I see is that people will come in, and when we do their portfolio stress test, for example, they'll come in and they may own six or seven or eight different mutual funds, and they may own um, you know, these different bond portfolios and these different stocks, but when we run the portfolio stress test, what happens is the eight different funds that they're invested in, they could all be in eight different mutual fund companies, but they're investing in the same, same companies. Yeah. So your overlap is you're not diversified. Um, if you're nearing retirement, just like you spoke of mm -hmm. a few minutes ago, yes, you want to take some of that money off the table. Some people, I mean, fear and greed drives the market for sure. Um, I saw a lot of people in 2000, more so, but they, you know, they, we just came off of the 1990s to 2000, mm -hmm. everyone's riding high, great. Everything's, life. Yep, I'm going to stay in my 401k, yeah. I'm just going to let it go, next year I'm going to retire because it's going to go up by 20% mm -hmm. again, and then three years in a row the market's down 45%. So, Let me ask you this, mm -hmm. what do you think is a realistic expectation these days for um, for growth every year in your investments? What should you realistically expect? Is that fair? Is mm -hmm. that a fair question? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I'm going to revert back to my buckets. So okay. if we go in the cash bucket, you need some money in the bank and you have to have some money in cash, you should get about a half a percent, one percent if you're lucky. So okay. we want to compare cash to cash, but you need some money there. Your income bucket, so this income producing asset, mm -hmm. you should be able to average somewhere around four or five percent. Okay. So it's not the same way we used to do it. So the strategies are different, the tools are different, the planning is different. It's not your parents' retirement plan, so everything's a little bit different. And there's different ways to go about that. Short-term bucket, six to seven percent, and then your growth bucket is closer to nine percent. Hmm. But all your money does not go in the growth bucket because right. if you start pulling money off of your yes. growth bucket to live, yes, and the market goes down, all right. Yes. Yeah. It's not too late for a math problem, is it? Can I go real quick? Go for it. All right. Someone has a million bucks. Mm -hmm. A simple rule of thumb that a lot of experts use uh, is to take 4% off your portfolio. Again, I'm still a fan of carving off what we need to guarantee the income, but if you had a million dollars in at 4%, we're going to pull out $40,000 a year, right? Okay. If the market goes down 20%, a million dollars now goes down to 800000 right? Because that can happen. Right. Very easily. Yep. 08, it was 38%. Oh. So, yeah. yeah. <laughs> So that's it a scary makes you one. nervous. I'm yeah. just going to stay with 20. Okay. So we'll stay with 20 so we don't have any heart attacks. So <laughs> we're down to 800,000. Now what do you have to pull off to get your same 4%? You need to pull off, or pardon me, your same 40,000. Mm -hmm. You need to pull off 5%. Well, if the market though goes down again the following year, 20%. Right. Well, now you're down to right. 640. You're not going to pull any more money out of your portfolio. No. Because you're, you're not going to feel comfortable. So the whole thing we want to do is, again, create these strategies, diversify the money so that you... You don't have to think about it all the time. You've got to be well balanced. Yes. Yeah. Um, yes. When Tranquil. it comes to your investment I strategy. Like it. <laughs> okay. Let's, let's look at those mistakes again so okay. we can uh, keep them top of mind for everybody. Real quick here. Not having that plan and then putting it on autopilot. Living too large, ignoring those higher health care costs, and not planning for long term care not understanding your investment choices and let's throw in that tax one just for just uh, for crazy bonus. sakes yeah. yes it'll be our <laughs> bonus one not tax planning for retirement yes. yeah not having that tax strategy mm. okay we can do this i'm feeling better about this john Good. i hope folks Good. at home are feeling better too i do too we're going to yeah. come right back stay with us for open line